prayer for the 2022 national and local elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language, Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm, Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord, that genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates Bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now on the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is traditionally called as Leitare Sunday, the Sunday of Joy. We rejoice because God loves us, and His love heals, His love forgives, and His love saves. So that we may become less unworthy to partake of this Eucharist, let us now humbly admit the many sins that we have committed. Let us ask God to forgive us, and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. 
Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol in his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come, and all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we may become the righteousness of God in him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. I will get up and go to my father and shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. He so longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying of hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants quickly, Bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and at once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are, all, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. 
My dear brothers and sisters, what is sin? Ano ba ang kasalanan? And today, Jesus gives us an interesting description of sin. Jesus tells us today that sin is leaving the Father's house. Ang kasalanan, sabi ni Jesus, ay paglayas sa tahanan ng Ama. Hindi dahil pinalayas ka, kundi dahil kusa kang umalis. In the parable that Jesus narrated, as we heard in our gospel today, the younger son deliberately left his father's house. Ginusto niya at sinadya niyang lumayas, umalis sa tahanan ng kanyang ama. He left his father's house thinking that he could find a place where he could feel at home. But the opposite happened. Instead of finding a place where he could be at home, he found himself among pigs. And that is not home. Tao na naninirahan kasama ng mga baboy, hindi ka makakaramdam ng at-homeness. He also lost his sense of self. Sa tahanan ng kanyang ama, siya'y anak. Pero sa labas ng tahanan ng kanyang ama, siya'y naging alipin. He was not at home with himself. And so outside the father's home, the younger son was not at home. Akala niya makakahanap siya ng lugar kung saan mararamdaman niya na siya'y at home, pero lalo siyang nawala. Hindi niya naramdaman yung pagiging at home na naranasan niya sa tahanan ng kanyang ama. But it was not the only younger son who left the father's home. The elder son also left his father's house. When the elder son heard that his younger brother went home and his father welcomed him and forgave him, the elder son refused to come home. Ayaw niyang umuwi dahil tinanggap ng kanyang ama yung kanyang nagkasalang kapatid. Kaya nanatili din siya sa labas ng tahanan. My dear brothers and sisters, that is what sin is. Sin is leaving the father's home. Sin is refusing to come home. If that is sin, then what is forgiveness? If sin is about leaving the father's home, forgiveness is about coming home. Forgiveness is about being welcomed home. Ang kapatawaran ay pag-uwi sa ating tunay na tahanan. Ang kapatawaran ay yung maramdaman mong sasalubungin ka, tatanggapin ka sa kabila ng iyong pagkakasala at sasabihin sa iyong ito ang tunay mong tahanan. Here, you will always feel at home. And this is the experience of the Israelites as we heard in our first reading today. 
Pagkatapos ng apat na pung taon ng paglalakbay sa disyerto, palipat-lipat ng lugar, walang permanenteng lugar, ngayon, dinala na sila ng Diyos sa lupang ipinangako niya sa kanila. Ngayon, meron na silang sariling lupa. Hindi na sila magpapalipat-lipat. Pwede na silang magtayo ng kanilang mga permanenteng tahanan. They are no longer nomads. They now have their own land. They are now at home. God brought them home. My dear brothers and sisters, God always invites us to come home. Yan palagi ang panawagan ng Diyos. Huwag tayong maglalayas mula sa Kanyang tahanan. Huwag tayong maglalayas mula sa Kanyang piling. Ang paanyaya ng Diyos, umuwi ka na. Kasi hindi mo mahanap ang tahanan sa labas ng tahanan ng ating Ama. St. Paul in our second reading today tells us, Be reconciled with God. That is another way of saying, just come home. Umuwi ka na sapagkat sa iyong pag-uwi, tanggap ka ng iyong amang naghihintay sa iyo. The Father is always waiting for our homecoming. My dear brothers and sisters, don't we all want to come home? Lahat naman siguro tayo palaging nananabik makauwi. There's even a saying that goes, there is no place like home. Because at home, we are most comfortable. At home, we could be our real self. At home, we do not need to pretend. At home, we are at home. Kaya nga kapag tayo'y nasa ibang bahay, sinasabi natin na mamahay ako. Hindi ako makatulog na mamahay ako dahil hindi ka at home. Pero sa sarili mong tahanan, at home na at home ka. Hindi ka mag-aalala kung nakatayo pa ang buhok mo, may laway ka pa sa muka, mabaho ka pa. Walang pag-aalinlangan dahil at home ka sa iyong sariling tahanan. Gustong gusto nating umuwi sa ating tahanan. Pagkatapos ng isang maghapong pagtatrabaho, nananabik tayong umuwi sa ating tahanan kung saan tayo pwedeng magpahinga. Pagkatapos ng mahabang paglalakbay, nananabik tayong makauwi sa lugar na mararamdaman nating sariling atin. Pagkatapos ng magtrabaho ng maraming taon sa ibang bansa, uuwi ka sa iyong tunay na tahanan. At sa bawat pag-uwi, may kagalakan. Kaya nga pag tayo'y umuuwi, hindi ba't nababanggit natin, salamat sa Diyos, nakauwi rin ng mapayapa. Natutuwa tayo na tayo'y makauwi. There is joy in coming home. Parang panatag ng ating kalooban dahil sa tahanan ligtas tayo. This Sunday, my dear brothers and sisters, the fourth Sunday of Lent is Leitare Sunday, the Sunday of joy. And the joy is derived from being welcomed home. Ang kagalakan natin ay nagmumula sa katiyakan 
na tayo'y may tahanan at sa tahanan ito ng Diyos, tayo'y hinihintay. Tayo'y may lugar at tayo'y palaging tatanggapin. It no longer matters how far have you been. It no longer matters how many sins you have committed. God invites you to come home. Umuwi ka na lamang at tatanggapin ka. Kadalasan, yung mga katulad ng nakababatang anak na inamin na sila'y nagkamali sa paglalayas, ang unang nakakaalam na kailangan na nga nilang umuwi. People like the younger son who acknowledge their own sins find it easier to come home. Kapag kinilala natin na ang layo-layo ko na pala mula sa tahanan ng aking ama, mas madali ang pag-uwi. Alam nyo kung ano yung mas mahirap na pag-uwi? Yung mga akala nila, hindi sila umalis. Katulad ng nakatatandang anak. Those who are, who are like the elder son who thought that they never left the father's house find it more difficult to return home. Kaya tayo po, baka akala natin tayo'y malapit sa Diyos, tayo'y banal at matuwid, hindi naman ako makasalanan katulad ng iba. Malapit naman ako sa simbahan. Relihiyoso o relihiyosa naman ako. Member pa nga ako ng mga religious organization, ng CWL, apostolado ng panalangin, o mother butler. Palagi ako na sa simbahan. Baka mas mahirap sa ating aminin na umaalis din tayo sa tahanan ng Ama. Those who think of themselves as righteous and holy might find it more difficult to admit that they are far from home. But in either case, God, our Father, always invites us to come home. Because God knows, outside His home, we will never be at home. Outside His home, we will not be at peace. Outside the Father's home, we will not be safe. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, please come home. Umuwi na tayo sa tahanan ng ating Ama. Today, we ask ourselves, what do you consider as home? Where do you go home? Saan ka ba umuwi? Sino ba ang inuuwian mo? Where do you feel most at home? Do you feel at home in sin? If you feel at home in sin, then come home to the Father's house where you will be forgiven. Baka at home na tayo sa kasamaan. Panahon na para umuwi sa tahanan ng Ama upang buhayin muli ang kabutihan. Baka mas at home na tayo sa kasinungalingan at panloloko. Hindi na tayo nababahala kapag tayo'y nagsisinungaling. Wala nang kurap ng mata kapag nagsasabi ng hindi totoo. Baka panahon ng umuwi sa katotohanan. Baka at home na tayo sa kadiliman. Hindi na tayo sanay sa liwanag 
dahil babad na babad na tayo sa dilim, baka panahon na para umuwi sa liwanag ni Kristo. Baka at home na tayo sa galit, sa sama ng loob, sa hinanakit na ating pinagkakatago-tago sa ating kalooban. At hindi tayo mapanatag, hindi ka at home. Baka panahon na para umuwi sa pagpapatawad at paghingi ng kapatawaran. Saan ba tayo at home? Sana tayo'y at home sa tahanan ng Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, we rejoice this Sunday because God invites us home. Even though we are sinners, and despite our many sins, God is always inviting us home. Tingnan nyo, sa Kanya na tayo nagkasala, Siya pa ang nagsasabing, umuwi ka na. Minsan tayong mga tao, kapag may nagkasala, pinapalayas natin at ayaw nating pauwiin. Pero ang Diyos, sa Kanya na tayo nagkasala, Siya pa ang nagyayaya sa atin, pauwi. God tells us, come home, umuwi ka na. For it is only in the Father's house that we could feel at home. Come home, umuwi ka na. And in the Father's house, you will hear the Father's word. I have long been waiting for you. Ang tagal na kitang hinihintay. Salamat at umuwi ka na. Welcome home. And hopefully, there will be many of us who are ready to welcome our brothers and sisters who after a long journey decide to come home. Minsan mahirap umuwi kasi hindi mo alam kung tatanggapin ka nung mga kasama mo sa tahanan. Katulad ng Ama, sana ang bawat isa sa atin kaya ring tanggapin, kaya ring yakapin, at kaya ring patawarin ang mga kapatid nating nagbabalik mula sa kanilang matagal na pagkawala. Like the Father, May we also tell our brothers and sisters, may we also tell one another, you have a place in our Father's home. Welcome home, brother. Welcome home, sister. My dear brothers and sisters, let us start our journey. Let us come home. Please stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The story of the prodigal son expresses in a simple but deep way the reality of conversion, that is, the working of love and the presence of mercy in the human world. 
it moves us to hasten in prayer to the Father. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That guided by the Pope and bishops, our priest may constantly welcome those who repent and seek reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That acts of charity will bring food to the victims of famine or economic crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That families divided over issues of inheritance or relationships may choose forgiveness and reconciling love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19 and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the departed may taste and see the eternal goodness of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God, welcome the prayers of sinners returning in devoted love to your unchanging mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life, and being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, 
And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. <clears throat> As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we, are, we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ignorance, deception, lies, and all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am I'm not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who enlightened everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo sa ating banal na misa ngayong umagang ito. Maraming salamat po lalo na sa mga kapatid natin na matyagang nagsisimba sa labas, sa ilalim ng init ng araw. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagpapasensya. Salamat din po sa mga kasama natin sa pamamagitan ng live streaming ng misang ito. Thank you for joining our Mass this morning and for all the support that you have been sending to the Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat din po sa ating staff, sa ating servants, lalong-lalo na po sa mga nagbigay ng sign interpretation ng ating banal na misa. Maraming salamat po uh, sa inyong tulong na ibinigay noong isang linggo para sa Ukraine. We were able to collect around 250,000 pesos which we turned over to the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines at kasama po ng iba pang mga collections from other dioceses ay ipapadala upang maging tulong natin sa mga naapektuhan ng digmaan sa Ukraine. Sa inyo pong paglabas, meron pong uh, available na leitare rosaries na pwede ninyong kunin. Kumuha po kayo at uh, dasalin po ninyo yung rosaryo, lalong-lalo na para sa kapayapaan sa ating bansa at sa buong mundo. Ang mga rosaryo pong ito ay nabless na, kaya maaari nyo pong kunin sa inyong paglabas. May God bless this new week and uh, may God always, may we heed always the invitation of the Father to come home, to come home into His heart. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.